So the problem that we're looking at is a string problem, and the premise of the string problem is the idea of separating digits and letters in a string. So if we look at these inputs and their outputs, uh, what we want this function to do, we want this method to do, is to take in a string of inputs, which could be any set of characters, um, any order, anything, and the outputs that it'll give, well, it'll give all of the numbers in the string in their original order, but at the front of the string, and then all of the letters in the string, also in their original order, but at the end of the string. And any character that isn't a number or a letter, isn't a digit or a letter, uh, we'll just ignore, so we won't copy anything. For example, in the edge case of having an empty string as input, we would just get the empty string as output again. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to sort uh, all the characters in the input string into either letters or digits, or we'll ignore them if they're not a letter or a digit, and then we'll put the letters and the digits back together to create this output. So here, for example, we'll generate two kind of intermediate strings. We'll have A, B, C, D, and we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4 as the letter and the digit strings, respectively, and we'll concatenate those back together at the end, after we've gone through all of the characters, to get this output of 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D. So let's look at how we'll actually do that using code. Uh, we'll have this function, this method, uh, it'll be a private method, it'll return a string, um, we're going to call it separate types, and it'll take a string as input. And so here's our string as input over here. As a reminder, strings are zero indexed li lists of characters, so A is a character, 1 is a character, B is a character, etc. And they are indexed starting at zero, so A is corresponding to index zero, for example. So the first thing that we're going to do is we have to build this collection of letters and digits, which for now doesn't have anything in it yet because we haven't started going through the string. So we'll just initialize these two empty strings, one that's called letters and one that's called digits, and we'll do that here this way. This is just a representation to sort of keep in mind the state of uh, the program that we're running right now. So the next thing that we have to do now that we have a place to store the letters and a place to store the digits is we have to iterate through the string, and this is a very common coding paradigm. Um, we'll write a for loop that starts at index i equals zero, uh, because conveniently we often start things at i equals zero, and also we index strings at i equals zero. So we'll start at zero, and we will count until i is less than input.length. Input.length will return, uh, in this case it'll return eight, because there's eight characters from zero to seven, and so if we stop at i is less than input.length, then the last character that we'll read is the character at index 7, which is the last index. And we'll do i++ each time so we can progress through the string. So we start here. This arrow will show where we are. So currently i equals 0. Um, and the next thing that we'll do is we'll look at the character that's at that index. So the character at index 0, for example, is a. Um, and the way we do that, the method that we call on that, is we can call this string method care at i. Uh, and that takes whatever the character is at the index i provided, and it returns that from the string. So the next thing we want to do is we want to check if this character is a character that we care about. In particular, let's start by just checking if it's a letter, right? So we know that this character is an a. Um, let's check. So we have this character method, or this character class, um, which is a really interesting class, because we know that strings are objects, and they're made up of characters, which are primitive types. So we can't call methods on characters. What we have is we have this character wrapper class, which instead of being a lowercase car, like we have written here to represent an actual character, we have this character wrapper class, which is an uppercase C, and it uses the whole word character. And that does have methods. So you can test, for example, if a character is a letter, you put the character in the input. So in this case, we're calling the character CH. So that goes as the input. And we call this isLetter method, uh, given that character is input, on this character class, and that class kind of tells, has a lot of instructions for different methods that we can use uh, to find out information about characters without actually having to call methods on the characters themselves because characters are primitive types, so they don't have methods. So anyways, this character class is a really good tool for a lot of string manipulation. And in this case, we want to know if the, if the character that we're seeing is a letter, right? So if it is a letter, then we're going to add it to this letters, this string over here. So because it is, we'll add an A. Let's see, for now we don't have to do anything else, right? This is just our, our string, we know that it was an A, we're good. But now we're moving on to the next index. So index i equals 1, um, the character here equals 1. And in this case, we don't want to add it to the letters, we want to add it to the digits list. So we have another character.isDigit method, 
um, which just like is letter, it'll take in a character and then it'll share a property of the character. In this case, it'll say whether or not that character is a digit. And so if it is, then we want to add it to the digits collection over here, this digit string that we're building up. So we add it and we now have a one here. So we're now going to keep going through the string. Um, we're going to take the same step as this for loop is progressing. Um, we're going to get the character each time. In this case, now the character is B because I equals 2. Um, and we're going to add it to either letters or digits or nothing. In this case, the example string that we have only has letters and digits. But if it didn't, we see that from these two if statements, um, if it didn't fit either of these if statements, we would just ignore the character and go on to the next iteration of the loop. So we're going to keep progressing. We're adding to digits. Now we're adding to letters. Now we're adding to digits. And the thing that's important to notice here is that when we do this plus equals, this letters plus equals ch, or dig digits plus equals ch, what that actually means that we're doing is we're doing letters equals letters plus ch. And what that does is that actually builds a new string that's the combination of letters plus ch, which is the new character, and then it reassigns it to the letters variable name. Because it's important to remember that strings are actually immutable. So we're not changing these strings in place. What we're kind of implicitly doing is we're building a new string and then assigning it back to the old name, so to the letter's name or the digit's name. So we don't have tons of new variables being built all the time, but we are building new strings. Just an important thing to keep in mind that these strings are always immutable. So we continue to progress through this string. Um, as the for loop continues, we've now seen that we've kind of hit all of the uh, indices in this string. So now we've gotten to the end of the for loop, and at the end of the for loop, um, the i disappears because it's gone out of scope now, and so all we have left is this string letters and string digits, which we built before the for loop started. So we have letters as a, b, c, d, and digits as one, two, three, four. All that's left now is to combine them. So what we want to do is we want to return, because we're getting a string out of this method, uh, we want to return digits plus letters so that we get the digits first and then the letters. So digits plus letters, when we add them together, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D. And that builds a new string which combines all the characters in the letter string with all the characters in the digit string uh, back to back, and then that whole string will be returned. So this is what our final solution looks like. We have this private string method. Um, it takes in an input and it returns a string output. Um, it has a for loop that does this very, very common pattern of iterating through a, through a string and at every index in the string, uh, getting the character and then checking some information, doing some sort of manipulation with that character. Thanks so much for watching.